have a little bit of the bubbly, baby. We're gonna have ourselves a little bit of the bubbly. Yeah. Whoa, it's Trump versus. Coronavirus. Hey. I can feel it down in my bones. I can feel it in my loins. I'm Joe Cronin. I'm joined tonight. We'll have Jake DeMarco here. We'll have all of you guys here. We're going to talk about AEW Dynamite, the injuries on NXT later, and a little bit about NXT and AEW. And then we are going to get into the debates with uh, Mr. Biden and... Uh, Mr. Trump and Mr. Pence and Kamala and whatever they are. Uh, we'll talk about that later, but right now we're in AEW mode. Yeah. I don't know, man. What's going on, guys? I'm in a weird mood. I don't know. I, uh, I've i been drinking a lot of coffee today. I will admit that. Lots of coffee. Not not like an insane amount, I guess. Like The other day I drank like three cups and I was a psychopath. You know what I mean? Like I was coming unglued the other day, like way too unglued. Like, way crazier than I should have been. What I want to know is, what's been better, the debate or AEW or NXT? In your opinion, if you're somebody out there who's been able to watch everything, what did you end up settling with? Was it the debate? Was it AEW Dynamite? Was it NXT? Was it none of those things? Were you just playing video games? I don't know. What do you think? And, um, and what were you doing? Love to know. I got a bunch of polls right now on Twitter, so if you guys want to jump on Twitter at some point and uh, let me know what you guys think about AEW tonight. I have a poll about AEW tonight. I have a poll about a lot of things. So go over there and check that out as we just wait a second here for everybody to get in here, get the alert that we are live with the AEW review, which we are, obviously. What's up, chat? How's the chat doing? You guys are naughty. You know that? All right. JCS is better, says Crazy Horse. Let's have a chat free for all for a minute here. Before we uh, get going here, we get Jake on the call. Uh, before we get that all rolling, let's see what the chat's saying. Whatever you want, it's free for all. I thought AEW was really good tonight. Killed it 7.5 out of 10, says Brent. Thanks, ma'am. The villain, Steve Kalan, MK Kratos. Thank you guys for being members in the chat, man. I appreciate that. Uh, NXT was weak, says Holy Moly Donut Shop. NXT was weak. Okay, I didn't see it, so I don't know. That's the one thing I did not watch tonight. I don't think it was weak at all. I think NXT was probably the better of the two shows tonight. Really? Yeah, NXT I, had a going for it, and obviously the main draw of reason I watched tonight live was to see what's going on. Does Finn relinquish the belt? You know, we weren't sure. Didn't seem like that because he said, "I'm still the champion." We'll explain later tonight. But 
they're just going to give them a few weeks off, him and Kyle, thankfully. So no relinquishing the title, no vacancies, no tournament, none of that BS. Finn's still the champion, and they both had a hell of an outing. So great yeah. match. But uh, at least, you know, no one's dropping the title. You don't have the NXT curse entirely, <laughs> at least not for the champion. But poor, uh, I, I'm terrible with names, Ridge Holland. Oh, my God. He is uh, He's going to be out for some time now. And it sucks because he just went ahead and started a program with Adam Cole. It looked like that was going to be a very big feud going forward. He attacked right. him after an event at TakeOver. And then today when he caught Danny Birch on the outside yeah. after the match, he went ahead and kind of tumbled backwards trying to do like a regular plancha. And that's when one of the referees held up the X sign. And you can see it on Twitter. His leg, oh, it, it definitely turned the wrong way. His foot's pointed one way and his legs kind of going the other. But immediately the uh, EMTs wrapped up. You they didn't put much on the camera, but he gave a thumbs up on the way out and they wrapped up his leg. So, you know, something's bad. Unbelievable. Yeah. Or, you know, tore something. It, it's just not a good, good moment, but. Oh, hopefully he's okay. Immediately, like three minutes after, WWE tweeted out uh, wishing the best to him. So, well, I want to say um, thank uh, you, not, thank you, thank you to everybody, man, who's been sticking by us. Um, yes, obviously, sir. with everything going yeah. on uh, around the world and the world, I don't know what the hell you're sending me. Stop messaging me, YR. What the hell? Um, or I, maybe that's <laughs> this guy's always messaging me. Um, appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> With everything going around in the world, man, you guys supporting on Patreon and everywhere else you guys are. Thanks to everybody who signed up on Patreon. We had uh, Off the Rails today, Episode Seven's up. We got Talk Spooky to me returning this week. And we got my uh, my weekly show returning uh, a couple days a week uh, tomorrow and then throughout the week. So thank you guys to people who signed up on um, uh, Patreon. And, of course, tonight we'll have the donation link in the description box, Twitch Alerts, Streamlabs, or you can Super Chat if you want talk about Cody uh, tonight that's a main thing should Cody Rhodes have gotten had won back the TNT championship very interesting uh, decision there had a feeling it might happen uh, when I saw the mat when the match started tonight and I said wow but I also thought they were going to get out of it with a some kind of a injury stoppage thing I don't I don't know but anyway none of that happened so I just want to say thank you to everybody who's around tonight uh, if you guys would like to uh, donate live, that would be sick, and we will play them live. Give us your opinions on AEW, NXT, and anything you're thinking about. Do it if you can um, that way, or we can uh, try to take uh, – well, I'll be trying to read the chat all night too, so really, really appreciate anybody who wants to support the channel and keep me uh, doing this stuff uh, the way we're doing it. Uh, and I uh, appreciate it, man. You know, when it's uh, – you know, there's – it's – well, let, let's just get into AEW. We'll get into the other stuff. And then at the at the end here, after we cover AEW, we cover NXT, I'm going to get into the debate stuff. And we'll yeah, talk about that. Yeah, I haven't seen that. any of the debate because I was watching both wrestling shows. So Yeah, we're going to open the I'm calls. curious how that's going. We're going to let people just freak out. You want to freak out on AEW? Go for it. You want to freak out on NXT? Go for it. You want to freak out on the world? Go for it. Well, this is going to be super open forum tonight of just anything. We're going to go all out and freak out. It's going to be great. It's going to be a lot so of fun. Picking off AEW should have been that Luther match. I agree with the chat. Right. I agree with most people on Twitter. That should not have been the main event. If Good. they wanted to do something with MJF as they did, they should have had Jericho just come back out at the end. Why not just have him come back out? It's his night. He can come back out and thank everybody in the ring, and then they can do that same thing. Yeah. Didn't need to be the main event or at least have a different match. Now, I understand in some sick semblance of a way why they had the match because the only history that they have in the company is Luther. That's it. You know, that, that they can go that far back with because they can't talk about ECW, WCW, WWE. You know, they can't mention any of these things. So as you said, they spent a shit ton of money on Cameo. Anyone that, you know, is, is somewhat famous and onwards gave a shout out to Chris Jericho tonight. And they did a good job with what they could because obviously they couldn't show old match footage. And they're not just going to show everything that happened in the last year with AEW. So they did, you know, well with what they could. But I, I still think that the uh, dog collar match was so intense for the crowd that they were dead following that. So it was hard to get them to, to really go above and beyond for Jericho. They still sang and cheered, but I think it would have been much better had he opened the show. He would have gotten a better reaction. I, I couldn't stop watching anything but Luther because he was so blown up. 
This guy was blown up. Like he was like he couldn't get his leg up at the end to boot Jericho. And then when he went to pin, he was actually like on his tippy toes stumbling. He was very close to like passing out due to exhaustion or throwing up. I know what that looks like because I've been like that. Like, I mean, that guy has not been doing cardio. Like, no, no. way. Well, that's because on the, the, the two matches I have seen on Dark, Sir Pentago is usually doing most of the, uh, you know, the, the heavy labor. So, obviously. Um, but oh, yeah, he's just, actually just, been wrestling? I mean, Jesus. Yeah, he, they've been they've been wrestling often on Dark together as a team. So. Oh, my God, dude. I... By the way, before we talk about anything else besides Luther blowing up, which hilar which was hilarious, it explains why he lost to several Asian women multiple times. But um, we, we got to talk about this, man. How much money did AEW spend on Cameo tonight? I'm, I think they spent twenty thousand dollars on Cameo tonight. I think all those. I think almost all of those were cameos. <laughs> I think yeah, they, they went said on. somewhat famous onward up. You know, they had some really famous people, but you know, then they scraped the bottom of the barrel too. <laughs> Steel Panther, I don't think anybody gives a shit about, you know? Well, like I mean, that. listen, I'm not trying to disparage the people. I thought it was... I thought no, it was cool. no, it's still a sweet thing to, to pay tribute to no, Jericho. I thought it was like cool. I said, it's just I think that they paid for cameos. That's all yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. A, a lot of it didn't seem sincere and heartfelt. <laughs> it just looked like a job. Yeah, we got we got paid to say this. Uh, we're going to go ahead and say this now. Uh, we've got it written down here on this cameo email we got. All right, we get 150 bucks. Thanks. It really, I'm serious though. Do you think those were cameos? I, I feel like they were cameos. That or they just reached out to as many people as possible. It seemed that way though, some of them. Hey, you want to be on national TV and maybe some people will look up your band again, Steel Panther? I mean, that's maybe what they, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> before we start bringing down the night too, one thing I want to bring up before I forget to mention it, besides Greg Valentine being there, which I thought was a really... Uh, a nice touch to the dog collar match because obviously it was you know, great until somebody won and then G Greg's reaction in the crowd. Was... <laughs> yeah, he looked uh, rather dead at that point. It was but... so funny because we just talked about him at, when I saw him a couple years ago at, or last year at New England uh, Wrestling Fan Fest or whatever. And he was there just like and somebody goes, oh, he's looking rough. I'm like, that's what he looks like. He looked like that in the 80s. Go yeah, ahead, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um. But they made sure to to really emphasize that, you know, Dr. Sampson is ringside. Do you think that's in response to the Matt Hardy stuff or just to signify that, like, oh, it wasn't? No, I think that was to signify how serious the match is. Like, somebody could, yeah. somebody's going to get hurt or somebody could get hurt. That's all it was. It was just to be like, we've got a doctor here because somebody could get hurt. Yeah, I just wasn't sure if that was done in response to everything that happened with Matt Hardy. It kind of that's that's how it felt to me because you never see doctors any other points, you know, near ringside. But I don't. I just thought it was to be basically be like, look how dangerous this is. We have a doctor nearby. That's all I thought felt it was. Yeah, it could be. But uh, so we start off the night. We got Brian Cage uh, taking on Hobbs. That's for the FTW Championship, and it was a good match. I, I like these two going back and forth, you know, big hosses beating the hell out of each other. It was very interesting to have Will lose already. That's a bit troubling, but we'll see what, what happens going forward. At least it was against somebody that is technically a champion, and it, it was a pretty definitive ending with the drill claw. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was hoping that Darby Allen was done with this feud with Starks after last week's match. And they even brought that up on commentary when Darby Allen came in to make the save. Uh, I, I don't, I guarantee we're just going to see a tag match now, two on two. I, I don't have much of a care because we've seen them fight for so, you know, so often Darby Allen and, and Taz's crew. So hopefully if it's something that happens in the next two weeks, they just move on from there. It's just another one off and then done. Yeah. I, I hope it's done soon. I mean, I've had a, how many times, I mean, one thing criticism here is like, how many times are they going to do this where Darby Allen comes out and he comes out and it's like, a, like, wow, they've done it like nine times that it's starting to wear off when Darby Allen comes out like, ooh, the yeah, he comes the, out to make the save. And, yeah, the good guy save. He's done it like 90 times now. Like, what are they doing? Can he wrestle somebody or can he? You know, maybe he could have come out of nowhere without music this time. I mean, I don't know. He's always showing up on nowhere, and it's always kind of exciting in a way because he's like, but it would be way more meaningful if it only happened once in a while. He's like doing it every week. Every week, it's like, here comes good guy to make the save. 
Yeah, and I agree stage. with Dragon Man. It won't hurt him, you know, talking about Hobbs. He's a rookie. His first loss is on Dynamite. In, a, in essentially, they want to view it as a title match, even though it's not an official title. They did say it was for the FTW Championship, so really, it's a title match. And I mean, it, it was it was a fun match, and you don't get those those big guy fights often, especially in AEW. So to see something uh, a bit different, I enjoyed it. So it, a, a smart opening. It should have been the Jericho match, but still a good match to start the show off. Forget all of this, Jake. I just found my complete gear for Gear of Dreadland's uh, Demon Hunter build in my uh, hardcore season of Diablo 3, and I'm at 300 Paragon right now. And um, I can't wait till later on when I can throw it all on my character and roll with the God DH in Diablo 3 in this hardcore season. No one knows what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, but you're no, excited I, as me getting to be able to marry that swan. I mean, that's what it all comes down to. But. I don't know, bro. I'm just, I'm, I'm retarded. Uh, so, okay, so let's, what's next here? I mean, it was a very FTR weird show. FTR versus TH2. Wait, the did, uh, two. did, um, what's his face? Uh, who's the guy who looks like a rooster or Jake Roberts? Oh, uh, Lance Archer. Did his promo come before this or did we miss that or is that uh, after? No, it did come before this. It came before the FTR match. Okay, yeah. so that was kind of goofy. He reminds me of like a skater guy or something. I don't know. He just doesn't, it's, it, it again comes, he comes off weird. Like he comes off kind of like Ryback a little bit. But I not, could see that in, in a certain way, but I, I, I just didn't care for this this pre tape. You know, it just I, I know they're going over the history that he's had with Moxley and everything in New Japan, and I, but I, now I, you know I, he's on another level, and I you like haven't that, faced anyone like me in well, AEW. I like that he did say like you know you fit, yeah those guys are mon are big monsters and stuff, but they ain't me. You know, so I did like that line, but everything else, man, I, dude, I was just like. Can they roll out just just roll out Jake Roberts and let him cut? I don't even like, just I just want to hear Jake Roberts cut promos. That's all I want. I don't even want to hear Lance Archer. I just want to hear Jake. We Roberts. We shouldn't be cut. hearing from Lance. If we do, it should be very very short and few yeah. and far between. We went the other way. We went from oh my god, Jake Roberts, awesome. He's with this guy. Okay, we, all I want to hear is Jake. To like, well, wait a minute. This is ruining this guy because this guy has no voice. And okay, now they gave him a voice. Oh my god, he sucks. Go back to Jake. So like, yeah, make him mute. Hurry up. I want Jake to be like. You don't understand what you're in for, Moxley. You you have let your guard down in the past. You were a prisoner. You said it yourself for years. That's how vulnerable you are. You're a guy that allows himself to remain vulnerable. And when Lance Archer get a piece of you, he's going to carve you up. He's going to expose every wound and squeeze until every hole in your body is leaking blood. And he's going to drink your blood like a vampire. That's what, like, oh my God, Jake Roberts is killing it. Yes. Like, give us that promo. I'm sorry. Okay, now go to where we were. I had to be an idiot. Mike Pence <laughs> still has a fly on his head right now. Mike so. Pence has a fly on his head. They probably treated the fly <laughs> That, that was what happened to Hillary, right, against Trump, right? They can't even stop corona. The fly's spreading coronavirus to everybody right now. No, that fly is a uh, super spreader. Yeah, it's just like when Hillary had that fly on her. That's hilarious. <laughs> it's it's a, it's a drone. It's not a real fly. <laughs> hey, guess what? All the Republicans that were mad when, like, or that were, that were happy and all the Democrats that were mad when they did that with Hillary, now they're going to be doing it with Pence and all the Republicans are going to be like, eh. Probably. Someone should be looking at him, being like, you know, like wipe your hair, <laughs> do something, smash it. Imagine uh, if he killed so. it, he smacked it, and then wiped it off. You know, because like, ate it. I you know, see him eat it. You know, if Trump, if Trump was debating and this happened to him, the difference between him, Hillary, and Pence, uh, Trump would take the fly. He'd be like, he'd be like, see that I killed the fly. You wouldn't have done that. You would have been like, you would have waved your hands around like a like an idiot. <laughs> But I, this is for I, all I the lizard it. people as he eats it. Yeah, yeah now, remember, th there was a fly on Hillary's head, too. And and all the Democrats were like, you're disgusting. Ugh. And all the Republicans were like, ha, ha, ha. Well, now all the Republicans are going to be crying. And all the Democrats are going to be like, ha, ha, he's a fly. See what it means? And you forget four years ago, you, uh, you a fly was on your demon's head, too. Uh, by the way, Mike Pence <laughs> is a demon. Um, Kamala Harris and Mike Pence have been demons tonight. Uh, Kamala Harris can't fucking tell a straight fucking truth, and Mike Pence is a robotic psychopath. Okay, god damn it. Uh, we'll talk about all that later. Maybe. Unbelievable. What do we got? Oh, we got FTR and the, uh, TH2 and 
Evans almost killed one of the members of FTR in this damn match with that botch from the top. Oh, my God. That looked horrific. Could have been really bad. Um, I'm, I'm trying to go through here. Who was it? That, uh, it was Harwood that he almost landed on, right, Dax? I, I screw up I, their names. Honestly, so much, dude, man. I still... I need flashcards. Flash Dax, but yeah, I always screw up who's who at this point. So one of them almost died as Evans went to the top, and he landed so awkwardly. He ran it right on his head and almost hurt his own leg. Like then he goes for a moonsault, and and then it's like, oh god, like <laughs> just just ease it up a little bit. You know, you're gonna kill yourself in the process. Yeah, hell of a I... bunch though. Glad everybody's okay. Uh, it was a it was a stiff match, and it was a very uh, more more in line with the FTR old school feel problem is here is that unless you're watching dark you don't really know th2 and you're you, you know you're you know they're gonna lose anybody fdr faces it's like oh they're, they're gonna win obviously but there was just no chance in hell that these guys had anything going for them so knowing that in this match it just kind of made me view it as them running through the motions wasn't terrible wasn't that exciting either though and then the botch at the end took away from it quite a bit too yeah, the whole night I felt like this, like just kind of like, all right, we're running through these motions of the show, and that's all we're doing is getting to the end here. Uh, but yeah, they had a their match was all right though. The tag match, you know, it was a nice little tag match that lasted a long time, and it felt yeah, like it was, it was for time. Fifteen minutes, I think. Yeah, it, was, it felt longer. I'll tell you that it felt eighteen minutes. Like I don't, I, I guess it wasn't. It felt like they took the whole twenty. Yeah. Yeah, like if there was intros and everything, maybe it was twenty. But you're, but if it was fifteen all overall, like wow. Um, oh, and Brian Cage, by the way, I didn't really get to comment on that match too much. Brian Cage and Will Hobbs, I thought was a nice opener. Yeah, it was. It was good to get that you know, power Haas strong man battle. I yeah, I really it. liked that opening match, man. Like, and I felt like the announcers are into it. Um, so I, I felt the announcing in the opening match and Brian Cage and Will Hobbs. FTW championship and then on top of it you know Taz is on commentary trying not be too bipartisan but at the same time you know he's or rather the other way I said that backwards but uh he you know he was trying to remain neutral but at the same time was obviously cheering for his guy and saying he's got confidence in his guy and you know they really uh they really helped Taz come off a lot more uh smart and validated Taz with uh, his guy Brian Cage getting the win over Hobbs. I love the utilization of Hobbs uh, coming in looking like a pretty tough opponent and really looking good in the match. I thought both guys did a really good job, and a lot of times you don't see Brian Cage have these sort of brawler, big guy matches, which he really no. he pulled it off here. A lot of times he tries to fly too high. Yeah, um, usually it's the faster style, and that's why I enjoyed yeah. about this, especially. And which is okay, you know, when he fly, he, when he decides to pull out the the Eddie Edwards type of, you know, work, I don't mind it really, like other people do. But this was a just classic style big guy match, you know, but also didn't put you to sleep like a Hercules versus the Berserker would, you know, back in the day. That'd put you to bed, Hercules and the Berserker. So. I gotta give credit, man. Loved it. Oh, here comes Bilbo Baggins! What a fuck he is! He's from Sexual Transylvania! Bimbo Baggins, uh, slurp, slurp, slurp um, on Tony while I support Antifa and Black Lives Matter with lame EW Tony Cody wins the circle jerk. Social justice bullshit is why why I hate AEW. Wow, okay. Bimbo Baggins not happy with AEW. I couldn't really read that print for some reason. Uh, the circle jerk and social justice bullshit is why I hate AEW. Oh, yeah, F... Uh, Omega and Janela. Okay, Bimbo Baggins, not a Janela fan. And Bimbo Baggins, not a Omega fan. Very well, interesting stuff. Cody's promo tonight was disastrous. <laughs> I don't know if you caught it, but it was it was horrendous, Joe. It was god-awful. Wait a minute. He was in the back, and he had it was after Cody's match. And they went ahead, and you see... Kenny talking to Marvez and him and Alex are talking about the tournament coming up 
and Wardlow, Colt Cabana, and Hangman Page are announced. And Kenny says, "Oh, it doesn't matter if I'm facing somebody in the in the singles division or a, a tag, you know, division, or if, if they're a former tag team, you know." It, it, he just sounded so unsure of himself, and it, it was very, very cringy. It, it, it was just a very bad <laughs> promo. Really, I I, yeah. I I don't know why I missed that. If that was when I went to pee or something, like I. He was I'm, trying to give off a sense like, oh, I don't care that Hangman's in the tournament, but he's trying to also present like this body language that Hangman he is or announced. Him trying to act is just painful. <laughs> it just, I, I, I thought it was bad. Really, I, I gotta yeah. go watch that. I missed, I missed that, and it sounds like he just sounded so. That sounds like it's one of the most interesting things of the night because it was so bad, and I guess, and I didn't even see it. So, it, oh well, it wasn't God. standout bad, but it was just bad. Wow. It was one of those things where it just didn't need to happen. Uh, before that, we had the main event, really, of the night, even though it was in the middle of the show. We had the dog collar match for the TNT Championship. These two delivered. They beat the living hell out of each other for almost 21 minutes, and both men des- deserve you know all the credit in the world for what we got here. Blood, guts, and carnage. I mean... They even had the table spot happen in the commercial break. I was I was so I, disappointed that I it happened like, picture in picture. You know what, dude? When that happened, when they went picture in picture, I leaned over to turn on the debate volume higher so I could hear what was going on in the debate. And the god, I turn over and the table's broken. And I go, "Are you? <laughs> what? No! Oh man, I was pissed that I missed it. And I didn't want to go back and rewind it either, so I don't even know how it looked. It looked good. It really did. But- yeah. And especially the the way that they were smart about the use of the chain, they yeah. had a plan here and they executed it very nicely. They knew, you know, we're going to pull off certain spots and, and like the one time they were both on the apron and then Cody uh, drops down to the floor and tugs on the chain and gets the cutter on the floor. That was great. You know, there was a lot of moments like that where they used uh, the chain to their advantage to either pull someone forward or choke each other or use it as a weapon. And it was just... It was well thought out and, and very well delivered. So I don't agree with the ending. I'm not happy that Cody won because, again, this is another thing that I, I just I think that it took so long to make the Dark Order into anything, you know, semblance of, of decency that now I feel like they're really going to be directionless. I don't picture Brody going and challenging for the, the world title at this point in time. It doesn't really fit in that. He felt good as the mid card champion, though, and, and his group of mid card, <clears throat> you know, lackeys, they were all kind of benefiting from him being the champion, and they were building up off of each other. Yeah. So I I feel like him losing this now really makes him full on directionless, and it's a big worry. Uh, Plus, it also makes Cody feel like, oh, it's Cody. He has to win because it's Cody. It's it's you know he always puts on the work. He he's he's great in the ring don't get me wrong i just don't want it to be like oh because he runs the company he's gonna win and this is a second title ring i really you- i don't understand why what I, I mean i was convinced the booking was you know somehow you know he's gonna win because of some weird reason or because of the dog collar or even he just wins out of the toughness you mean brody and lee brody lee cody. yeah brody yeah. wins yeah. and then and then you know cody doesn't really wrestle him again until a big show or until whatever probably a big show though like a bit like they have a big show or or if the tnt belt will never be defended on a big show on a pay-per-view and it will only be defended on uh, tv i would have thought i would have thought brody was running with this thing for another four to six weeks at the least i figured they would this would have more than just a one week build i mean cody just came back and now he won it yeah, I mean, which he which, which challenge, and then everything he cut with the promo afterwards, it was a little confusing because he was saying how people were telling him to go down a dark path, but this is my life's work, and the fans <clears> made it possible. <throat> but no one told you to go down a dark path. You came back dressed in black with a new set of hair dye, you know, looking like you were uh, taking this this kind of edge to yourself. So I don't know. It just was a bit confusing with what he was trying to say. I get the end of it, him embracing the fans and saying that, you know, it's because of you, but what he was trying to get at didn't really make much sense. Yeah. It sounds like that doesn't make any sense. I mean, and Brody Lee, you know, why, yeah. Why wasn't the guy running with the belt more still and making it more important? And then eventually, you know, Cody can come back and win it again. I I just don't, 
quite understand um, where they're going with why they did that. I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm very shocked about this. Like, it's not like when Moxley defeated Jericho. We kind of went, oh, you know, I think Jericho should have just kept running with it probably. But I like this so too. So, like, this is okay. You know, it's not like that. This is like I'm shocked because like yeah, this I'm, is I'm very surprised. Isn't like this is basically the completion of the story. Yeah, this is it. So now, I I I mean, they could go for a rematch. I hope not, but because what are they going to do? Pass the title back on? I don't want to see Brody Lee lose again to Cody either. So a rematch isn't worth it unless they're going to. I don't want them to hot shot the belt back either. For now, they, they're going to have to figure something else out to make the Dark Order worthwhile again oh man oh it's and it's not a matter of like oh you have to wait and be patient we've been patient with the dark order for a long time now you know they they, they when we first got the reveal the exalted one with Brody lee his character didn't align to anything that the dark order was doing he was a vince mcmahon and they were more of a cult so it took a long time for them to really figure out what they wanted to do and become and they started to get more into the comedy on the the vlogs of bte and whatnot and they, they started to find their own and they became very very entertaining dark order is one of my highlights each week i always look forward to whatever they're going to get into on bte and lately whatever we had on aew with them has been good as well so i i hope that they just don't get buried here but right we'll now see. um right now aw is looking at one of its first thumbs downs like ever like to, or maybe like there's been like three or five bad show kind of bad shows uh it's looking at a bad situation with you guys right now 76 people have voted so far right uh 46 percent loved the show tonight well, okay, I guess I guess it's not really looking that bad because people are saying it was okay. I thought I was looking at it wrong. I don't know why. So 47% say it was okay, and 6% said it was bad. So I guess it's it's not a negative reaction, but it's a it's a mixed reaction for for how good it was. So actually, I take that back. Um, loved it. Half of you guys loved it. Half of you guys said it was okay, and only a few people said it was bad. So. I'm in the it was okay category. It was all right. It was an yeah, okay I, show. I, I didn't certainly hate anything about tonight, but there was yeah. nothing that I was like, I really liked the dog collar match. That would be my favorite of the night. The opening was really good too. Yep. The wrestling was good, but some of the creative decisions and, and everything else that we were given, especially with you know the Jericho side of things. Knowing that the Jericho like thing was up. just basically to hop in the ring with his buddy uh, for a match to just to pop themselves really just to pop Jericho. exactly it was just to get themselves over yeah absolutely and and the, and the thing is too like i want to give them the benefit of the doubt i know they didn't have a lot to work with for a history of jericho but they could have come up with something better they could have scripted something here I, i'm telling you that there, there had to have been a better way um yeah we got big swole serena deeb and that was a bit of a mess Sadly, um, that was not as clean. Swole is, I haven't seen a good match yet with her, really. No, and, and she said that she was, funny enough, we were talking about it in the, the JCS chat, that she was getting some crap on Twitter for wearing her BLM uh, armbands. And she's not one that's like, you know, when she's on TV, she's not overly vocal about Black Lives Matter or anything. She just wears it, you know, like anybody else would. And she went ahead and she had the other armband on today that said, stay mad. When she came out, she pointed to both of them. So I thought that was pretty funny on her part. <laughs> kind of just acknowledging all the hate that she was getting, but Well, she uh, should she should not suck in the ring. Yeah, not a great match. I like I like her, but I don't know, because Serena gave us one of the best matches we had in AEW with you know, mm -hmm. um with Thunder Rosa. So Yep, that was one of the best matches. Yeah, so Big Swole here not performing seems to be the outlier. We had Miro in the audience playing an arcade cabinet. Oh, my God. So there's that. I mean, you always have <laughs> John Moxley cut a good but samey, you know, promo. We've heard it. Same thing, you know, from him. Everybody dies, as he says. You know, he, he lived up to it, taking a shot at the bar. It was it was it was shot. Well, but nobody's died yet. Yeah, that's the he thing. really it's just comes off like a fake. You know who he reminds me of is one of my childhood friends who I no longer fr friends, friends with, obviously, because uh, that's me. But um, he what he was like that. He reminds me of that cheesy thing, like a middle school backyard wrestling kid would say, like, "My thing is everybody dies." It's like okay, <laughs> and he go and he doesn't look like everybody. It doesn't look like it. Lance Archer. It doesn't look like everybody dies. 
It doesn't look like everybody dies, dude. You look like a fake person. Well, I'm sorry. Moxley says it. You know? Yeah, like I, I think I could say it, and it would be scarier. Like you don't scare me. You don't seem believable. Lance Archer is terrible. Like everybody dies. <laughs> no one dies. No one dies. You look like a rooster. Okay. Nobody's dying. You you look like an idiot. Now Jake Roberts says that. If Jake Roberts said everybody dies like i'd be like oh that's kind of creepy but jake roberts wouldn't say that because it's a stupid thing to say jake roberts would say like i'm gonna pull out your tongue in front of your family and then i'm gonna fornicate with your wife in front of your kids like and you'd be like oh my god what the fuck like but like everybody dies ah ooh, <laughs> you're a loser all right you you look like a rooster okay with that stupid big red braid of shit. Your promos are weird. You come off like a video game nerd. I don't know why, man. Lance Archer, not scary. Brody Lee, scary. Lance Archer, as long as Brody Lee is there, and even Brian Cage. Brian Cage could grab a microphone and say, I'm Brian Cage, and tonight I'm going to snap your neck. And I'd be like, I, that's, that guy looks scarier than uh, Lance Archer. The scariest of them all is Luther. No. He looks like he's going to rape you every time well, his yes, eyes pan I, across the camera. My, I, my butthole just shrinks three sizes knowing that he's near. Now, if Luther said everybody dies, I would also laugh at him. However, if Luther said... But if he said, saw you laughing, then he might start sniffing you, and then you no, got a real problem no, see, because he becomes obsessed. Luther says everybody dies, I laugh, just like Lance Archer. But Luce, Luther just looks into the camera and goes penetration now i'm scared fucking terrified of that just say penetration into the camera and look at the camera and then go now that's fucking scary that's oh, terrifying God. luther luther no. fucking luther saying penetration and then doing this and going that's scarier than lance archer Tell me I'm wrong. You tell me wrong. I'm wrong. I do like Archer too, so I can obviously tell you you're not wrong there because he's not scary or intimidating. In New Japan, he was more, you know, when we were building up to his match with Moxley, he seemed like more of an actual threat. Mm -hmm. But they just, I don't know, they can't get it right now. Him throwing people around the locker room is more humorous. And then they, you know, have him ripping up Jake Roberts' shirt, so that doesn't help at all. Uh, they haven't was... had many great promos except when it's all Jake. That night was funny when he threw the guy's head up into the air and Jake was cutting a promo while he was doing it. Then he said something. I thought that was all right. But it was always it did what it always does, right? Like Jake started, I like it. And then he's beating up people and throwing a guy into the ceiling. I like it. And then Jake's finishing his promo. I like it. And then and then he comes over to the camera and says, I told you, everybody dies. Ha <laughs> ha. And then I went, Oh, you fucking lost it right there. So it, no. Like just don't don't let this guy talk anymore. Stop letting the guy talk. No more talking. For for uh for Mr. Whatever his name is. I wanna call him Luther now. Uh yeah, we'll call him Luther. What's his name? Uh Luke like when I when I wanna call him Luke Rojas. Yeah. Lance Archer. Lance Archer. Uh. Oh it's what turkey, if the turkey time! Hit us? What if they filleted us? What if they killed us and ate our children? What if the turkeys ate us? What if they filleted us? If the turkeys ate us, if they had to hate us, the Thanksgiving was a little bit different. Instead, the turkeys ate us. They gobbled us apart But first they'd eat our nuts And then they'd eat our butt The turkeys ate us What if, what if What if the turkeys ate us Yo, turkey masks are still available on uh, Teespring on my website down below. Us, 
Instead of mashed potatoes Instead the turkeys ate us Pretty mixed tonight. I wouldn't go higher than 5.5 but that dog collar match between Cody and Brody was insane. Just wish that it didn't end with Cody going over. Ending was some SNL shit but congrats to Chris Jericho on 30 years in the business. Congrats to Jericho. Thank you to Soundwave92, man, with the $29 donation. That is the largest donation in the stream. If you guys want to keep all my streams going, think about dropping a dono. The link's down below. Uh, Soundwave, thank you, man. Um, what a mess. Uh, Chris Jericho, 30 years in the business. I like it. Um, but yeah, it was and, a little when you When you see some of those tweets and comparisons... You know, Jericho at this age versus like Hulk Hogan at this age, at, you know, when they were both in their 50s and right. Hulk Hogan looked pretty much like he did in his prime close enough to. And Jericho Super has this huge Jericho. belly. Of, uh, <laughs> Drinking. Hey, Joe and Jake, I give AU7 five tenths. Oh, really? Um, that, is that Steve Klan? All right, Steve Klan. Thank you, man. Seven and a half out of ten. Not a bad score. I'd probably give tonight about a six out of ten or something like that. It was okay, but yeah, I, I feel bad going low because the the, the dog collar match was yeah, that was really, really good, excellent. I, I mean, mean, whether we don't like the outcome or not, I, I still the match itself was it delivered, and that opening was really great. But the yeah. other three matches they had, everything else, uh, all the backstage segments and promos, I we forgot to bring it up before the young bucks. Oh my god, stop super kicking people! Yeah, you still they're protect annoying. the camera guy. They are annoying. It's just, it's frustrating. It's annoying. And then as soon as that happens, then we have to deal with best friends calling FTR wieners, you know? Super chat. Yeah. Super chat. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what was Moreau that? Moreau a lame nerd. Uh, Corwin Everly. What's up, Corwin Everly? Uh, Corwin Moreau. <laughs> Miro's a lame nerd. Yeah, he is. Yeah, man. That was embarrassing. Miro was in the audience just, like I said, playing an arcade cabinet. I don't know what he was playing. I didn't get to see it, but... There the, he was. The wiener thing, though, was like... Yeah, they have them as hot dogs, you know, with their faces photoshopped on, and, and then they finally come out, and they make the challenge for next week as FTR is no longer going to, you know, skirt away from them and avoid them and not give them their shot, so... It was just weird. It was like, was... What, the wiener thing felt like it was a WWE skit. And I hated that the brawl, you know, FTR, they want to bail out... All right, but basically you, you kind of had the advantage at first, and then they hold up the titles, and all right, you know, I just, I don't, again. A lot of WWE view. stuff going on. You know, Darby couldn't, yeah, yeah, Darby couldn't get the through friends, the. friends, I don't think, can win the titles. You know, does anyone believe in them at this point? Especially after they had that great. They had a great spot, and then they bailed on them, yeah. You know, they had that great match. Oh, my God, you know, the, the, the fight that they had in the parking lot brawl was amazing. That was, yeah. so and good. I hated one of the best. Brawls we've seen in ages. And again, ever. there's invisible force field ropes because Darby Allen couldn't just walk over and whack what's his face in the head with the skateboard earlier in the night, too. And I was like, yeah. why can't you, why don't you go Ricky whack? Starks him? barely walks out of the ring. You yeah, know, he, he, he doesn't even get off the ropes. And Darby's right there. He can cold cock him yeah. without any effort, basically. He's right there. Yeah. You don't even have to chase him. He could have smacked him easily with the skateboard or done anything to him. And then when he got out of the ring, then Darby like climbed on the rope like I'm bigger than you, haha! Ha. Like I'm gonna do, I want to do something, but you're out there. So they went full fucking force field ropes that Cody made fun of, and it's just like I was like, why didn't he just whack him with the? I mean, the guy turned his back to him and then slowly stepped away and was still. The, it was like just weird. I don't know. That was a weird thing. I don't understand that. Like get the like act, the guy's got a skateboard. You're not scared at all of the skateboard at all. You're that dumb. Exactly. He's brandishing a weapon. I did, that was very strange. I mean, that was just what the hell was that? I, I don't that's know. why I was so excited with last night when Drew McIntyre went and found Randy Orton mid promo and attacked him. It's like you know when these guys cut promos, you know they're backstage. You know they're sitting on stage, you know, on a set somewhere. Or, or, you know, like you met, just brought up, the invisible force field thing. I was so thrilled that he, hey, he found him and he choked the life out of him against the wall and started to beat the crap out of him. It works. That's what I want to see more of. I, I hate the idea of them, you know, having something that keeps them from interacting. And that's that's as old as wrestling, obviously, but it doesn't work in the modern times. Yeah. And obviously, we had our main event, Joe, the 
uh, <laughs> the, the wonderful and amazing Luther teaming with Sir Pentago, known as Chaos Project, taking on Chris Jericho and Jake Hager. Um, both teams get a pretty big entrance. Jericho gets all the pyro in the world this time. So that was uh, <laughs> pretty cool to see. It was nice to hear all the fans sing along to Judas still. Awful match. And and I wasn't trying to, you know, outright give Jericho shit either. It was just the the easy to note comparison before, you know, because I love Jericho. No doubt about it. I respect and thank him for all he's done. This was just not a way to showcase 30 years of his career when he's had such exemplary yeah. match previous to this in AEW in the past year. They could have done something much better here to showcase and highlight his abilities. And on top of it, uh, you know, Jericho looked just terrible in this match. He did. It, everybody it did. Some, everybody did except I mean, for everybody did, but yeah. It was it was just like it was lackluster. It was just a we it just felt like a weird excuse to have Luther get in the ring, I guess. I you know, I don't know. Maybe he didn't even want to do it. He looks yeah. I mean, he was he looked like he was blown up. It was a mess. He was done for immediately, it seemed like. And, and then on top of it, the MJF stuff fell flat too. It, it was cringy. The the clownico, the clown was very stupid. And, you know, that fell very, very flat. The crowd didn't give a damn about that. And then the picture of MJF was very predictable. Obviously, you knew he was giving him a photo of himself. That's, that's you know, tried and true, age-old <laughs> proven thing with wrestling. Mm -hmm. And Jericho eventually freaks out on him, says, you know, I hate clowns. Never interrupt me again. Jericho nails the clown. They go face to face. And then, oh, look at that. It's just a joke. And they do an SNL bit to close the show. Everyone comes out, does a toast, and the credits roll by with Jericho's name being credited for everything on the show. So, yeah. I mean, kind of funny. Silly, but... And I could laugh at the credit thing, but all the heels coming out and everything. Like, if you're not going to have the whole locker room come out and you're just going to do the heel thing, all right, fine. But still wasn't a great way to end the show. Sorry to say. It just, just, just felt cheap and like a waste of time yeah i didn't really um especially when nxt had dakota kai and raquel teaming up against rhea ripley and ember moon in their main event so wow that, that was an awesome tag match from those two you think uh, the wrestling really one hot main event that nxt i hope gets a, a good you know amount of viewers for do you think the uh, NXT effort was put in? Do well, you think the NXT wrestling was better than the AEW wrestling? Yeah, I th I think more consistently because right off the bat we got Tommaso Ciampa versus Kushida, and that was a slugfest. They were beating the living hell out of each other, and Kushida ended up putting Ciampa in this great like converted triangle at one point, and Did anything... he gets out of it with a power bomb from. It was brutal. It was great. Did anything beat the? Dog collar match? That's um, probably hard to I would say. say but... the, the, I, no, but it's also because that's a, a stipulation type match and it had more big spots in it. Yeah. So, but as far as like the, the regular straight up wrestling goes, they had, you know, the, I would take the opening to NXT over anything else in AEW tonight. Wow. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check. I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna watch NXT tonight because it sounds like it was interesting. So I've I've got to now watch NXT, and I've got to watch the second half of the debate that I didn't see, because I don't yeah. know how long the debate went after AEW ended, but I missed it. Probably missed half of the debate because of that. I think it went for about forty minutes. I don't really want to watch it necessarily. It's just I'm watching it to know what what happened so I can debate with everyone else. Uh, that's really it. But AEW, same thing. I want to watch NXT, and I'm. And try to figure out what won this week, NXT or AEW. What do you think won this week, AEW or NXT? I would say NXT. And I don't say that often. Usually I give it to AEW, but yeah. NXT had the, the stronger week. And usually I don't watch live, but I wanted to know. I, I was watching for us, really, to see if they were going to relinquish the title and vacate it. Or, you know, because that would have been the, the real NXT champion curse. And mm. thankfully, that's not the case. So, again, for those that came in later, uh, Kyle O'Reilly and Finn Balor, both, both pretty banged up. Finn's jaw is broken in two places, but it's not anything that is keeping him from defending the title. So more than likely he'll be defending it uh, at the Halloween show or, you know, close enough to after that. Damn. Uh, Killian Dane and Drake Maverick had a tag match tonight that, that they had some comedy stuff in, but it made sense. I liked it. 
that was, yeah. you know, fun to watch. And they continued the Gargano storyline. And what they're doing tonight, without spoiling for you, it, it was just interesting. So, you know, I, I like how they're furthering that as well. There's just a, a lot of good stories that are being presented on NXT. Yeah, it sounds like maybe it was the more solid night. The second half, it when was the dog? The dog collar match really rounded off the first hour of AEW. And that's the thing is I think the first hour of AEW tonight was pretty good. And then the second half was just a nosedive. Um, that's, yeah, because the, the Brody Lee match kind of closed out that first hour and went into the second. So, you know, yeah, that worked. Yeah, their first main event, they said, or the main event, they said, started at, what, nine f at 8.50, so... Yeah, if you were to lump that into the first hour, that right after that, there's no need to watch really anything except yeah, it went for about a half an hour in all. So, oh wow, so it did cross over into the yeah, it was like nine twenty when it ended. So it was nine thirty. You know, I think AEW for that hour and twenty minutes did a pretty good job of pacing the show and introducing things and having matches. I thought that was great, but really, once that match ended, it all got really kind of crappy. Yeah, once the that women, match ended, there was only about a half an hour of TV time left. The women's match was no good. Um, Luther's match. Luther's match was no good. I mean, even the celebration was kind of weird. I didn't love the MJF stuff. I Normally, they're gold. I didn't like it at all. Usually, they're, the, they're some of the best things on the show, either individually or together. And we've gotten some great interactions from these two for multiple weeks in a row now. Yeah. Yeah. They had the cold open, what, three weeks ago? Then two weeks ago, they had their other interaction. Then last week, we had the jacket thing, right? Or was that the week before? Either still, you know, they've had some really fun and entertaining promos. And with this, it just was not exciting. I hate to say it, but, I mean, this is definitely one of the worst, like, second halves. Like, at, like at least, it's hard to say, like you said, because the dog collar match was so good. And then the opening match was good, and there was a couple other good little things. So it's not like it wasn't bad, but what I would say is there's it was almost like the tale of two shows. Like the first the the first half of the show was a solid good show, but the second half of the show was very bad. So that's what makes you wonder. And plus, the last forty minutes were so bad, and those were the last forty minutes you saw. So you're in this mood of like, ugh. So, like, that's why it was booked wrong. They should have had the Luther-Chris Jericho celebration to end the first hour or to start the night, and they should have ended with that dog collar match. Like, no doubt about it, that should have ended it. Um, the, the opening match was fire, so that's fine. Cage and Hobbs, great pace to start the night. And if you'd mixed in that other stuff in the middle somewhere, it might have came off better, put the women earlier on. Um, but who would have known it would have gone that way? You know, I mean, you don't really know what's going to whatever. But so in the end, it was just lopsided how the first one hour and 20 minutes were a nice thumbs up. And the last 40 minutes were just a atrocious. Like, and then next week, we have uh, a very stacked show. We got Miro and Kip Sabian. They'll be in action. We don't know their opponents. FTR will face best friends for the world tag team titles. Uh, Cody will take on Orange Cassidy, which... We'll talk about that in a second. And then John Moxley against Lance Archer for the AEW World title. So I, I'm i not thrilled with Cassidy getting another title shot. He just lost to Brody, what, two weeks ago, was it? Um, Yeah, three and weeks. That he lost two or, two two or three or, weeks ago? Yeah, so weeks. I mean, now he's suddenly just getting another title opportunity. It works because it, it's it's someone popular, so it'll pop the crowd on a on a celebration night. That's why they're doing it. It's not so much to follow their rankings or really to make sense, but you don't have to be logical here. If it's just a one-off and this doesn't turn into a feud type thing, fine. Just have it for the anniversary show. I'm sure it'll be entertaining, as everything with Cody usually is. But uh, I, I just wasn't thrilled that Orange Cassidy yet again got another title shot. Yeah, I don't understand. He's, I mean, he did beat Jericho, so. But, like, he's another one who, like, kind of fallen off the wayside. Well, he beat Jericho, and then he lost the title match, right? Yeah, I don't I don't so, know why. I don't know. I just feel like he needs to have more matches to, like, stay stay on top of this maybe relevancy. I, I feel like he's kind of goof still. He's a goof still. You know, I don't really. It's not Give really it a hell match. yeah! Thanks for having a show tonight to take my mind off the other stuff on that was total shit.
we should have watched Air You instead. Maybe Dan wouldn't have fallen asleep from boredom. <laughs> Has Air You said anything yet about getting a second weekly TV night? No, we still don't know what the hell's up with that. I'm, I know it's coming. It's still being worked on and planning and it's supposed to be coming out sooner than later. Uh, I, I know that the coronavirus yep. really, you know, halted plans that they had or else I think it would have been out by the anniversary show. Yeah, exactly. It would have been out. If there was coronavirus, we probably wasn't coronavirus. We probably would know about it by now. But to put on another live event sports show during this they figured probably figured let's wait till like we can do this the right way um so it's probably put it on hold big time um and uh one of the things i wanted to mention to you too is that ember moon has new music oh and i i didn't hate it but i, oh. I want to hear it again if they upload it like in full it was kind of difficult to hear with the commentators and everything you know so I, but it was very generic yeah sadly i really liked her old theme yeah it was something, I mean... It fit with the Red Moon entrance that they had and, and the howling that she did. Like, all of it just worked well together. This theme seems very, very generic, so it's unfortunate that they're just losing <sighs> all of their, their freaking music out they, of stubbornness, it seems. They put all this time into these characters' music, and you, you can't pay CFO. You can't pay him. Like, I'm, I'm ready to start threatening... I'm actually starting to get angry at CFO. Like, I, I know that I should be mad at WWE. They're the ones, really, WWE, that should be paying for this. A part of me is mad at everybody. I'm gonna start. I'm, I'm literally gonna start making threats to CFO on Twitter. So I hope every, <laughs> I hope everybody's following me on Twitter. I might not. I may not have it long, uh, because I plan on threatening CFO on Twitter and, and WWE. So I hope everybody's following me on Twitter at JCS Commentary on Twitter, because uh, I'm getting very fucking pissed off. And I'll well, be speaking on, of, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm getting, getting emotional, off, and I'm going to start really making some videos threatening these people for ruining the integrity of their company. So follow me on Twitter. I want to see you go nuclear. I want to see you, you know, bring out not just the, the lawyer, the lawyers, plural, the big guns. You got to get the whole law firm on this. I'm really pissed off. Well, speaking of being pissed off, WWE is being sued for violating the Americans with Disability Acts on their website for the their hell? WWE shop. A uh, gentleman by the last name Romero says that the WWE shop violated this act by make, not making their site accessible to the blind and visually impaired. He act, He's visually impaired and legally blind. He accesses the Internet uh, with the assistance of a screen reading software device. And he said that he was unable to access WWE shop because it doesn't allow him to browse the website. So he's saying they're in violation and he's suing them. He's blind. How does he know what he's going to have on his T-shirt? Jesus. You know what we should do with this guy is, um, what's his name again? Uh, his last name is Romero. Romero. Yo, Romero. So, like, we should abduct you, put you in a van, and beat you senseless until you're deaf as well. Ah, oh, there we go. Make him, now he's, you know, full disabled. How about that? <laughs> uh, how about you? How about we go full with you? How about we go fully disabled with you? Okay? I mean, you can't see what shirt he's got on anyways. So Are you serious, bro? Are you fucking kidding me? Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself, Ramiro. <laughs> fuck you. I hope you get a fucking ear and bacterial ear infection. And now you can't <laughs> hear shit either. What are you going to do then, huh? What are you going to do then? And I'll have super smell. You piece of shit, idiot. Wasting fucking the court's <laughs> It'll be time. The incredible nose. Wasting everybody's time. Dude, I'll send you a shirt that says fucking dickhead. How about that? I'll send you a shirt that says dickhead. <laughs> you nasty idiot. I, I guarantee they'll get out of the lawsuit just by fixing the website. You know, I, I don't think they'll get actually sued, but we'll see. Yeah, I'll, Never know. I'll fix something for him. All right. He's, <laughs> he's got to have family that he cares about. I'll make them go blind. And then you guys can all sit around having a hearing aid party. <laughs> <laughs> it's sign language night on the JCS Army. That's right. <laughs> I don't know, dude. A lot of small ones. <laughs> oh, Drew. Yeah, you Kurt Angle know. said that he gave two reasons uh, why he refused to return to WWE, neither of which seems like the real answer, but he said, I started a new company that required 100% of my attention, and with the pandemic, um, you know, it was just too much. He said, yeah. I, was, I wasn't going to manage, you know, somebody for the amount of money they wanted to give me, and, you know, that seems legit. So That sounds that like a plug. He's like, wasn't enough. I'm going to say the real reason why I left or wouldn't go back, but it's really just to make news on that so that they you plug the business you're starting. Exactly. And I had to rush it down my throat. Yeah, you did. Huh? Kamala and Pence. 
and I had to rush it down my throat. <laughs> um, Jericho talking with Inside the Ropes was was telling different stories, going over his anniversary of you know thirty years, and saying how he didn't want to face uh, Fandango at WrestleMania, and Vince kind of used uh, his Jedi mind tricks to to really think that Jericho was going over, but he never actually said he was. So Ooh. Jericho had no one to be mad at but himself. And <laughs> Vince, you know, also said that the IC title didn't matter. He said, no one cares about the fucking IC belt mm -hmm. <laughs> at all. When Jericho said, why don't I go for that instead of facing Fandango? So Vince was right. And, uh, you, you know, wow. that's for sure. No one cares about the IC title. Well, they don't now. That, Vince? Yeah, whose fault is that? The, and what does he mean? Like, that belt is the is the second most important title ever in the company. <laughs> well, so he's an idiot. This is, this is also at WrestleMania 29. That's point, his so belt. It should have been, but that belt was a, a severe joke for many years. It was so. the third most important belt, at least, if not. You know, it's like... It should that have been. That makes me so mad, dude, because that belt was so over in the 90s and eight, you know, 80s. Oh, like, absolutely. That, that belt was, was one of my that that probably is my favorite title, you know. Yeah. Not look wise, but I'm saying like, you know, for championships, just for all the memories that I have of matches and uh, that's why I liked when they, you know, they they brought back the white belt again and Cody had brought that back and they they really started to put more focus on the title and then it just faded again and they started to pay attention to it again and it fades off. Right now they're doing a good job on SmackDown making the IC belt feel important. But with the draft coming up, we'll see how long that lasts. Speaking of lasting, in a few minutes, we're going to switch over from wrestling over to the debate stuff, and we're going to go live on Corrupted Nation and stay live here for a little bit, too, and then cross over into the fun politics, and we're going to fucking fuck each other up. Uh, it's going to be great. But um, overall, what would you what would you give AEW? Well, wait a minute. Let me go to the donos real quick. we got a dono coming in. Um, if you guys can, drop a dono, man. We definitely would uh, love to hear from you guys tonight. And uh, I'd love to keep doing these shows. So drop a dono and uh, let us hear from you tonight. Five bucks, ten bucks, two bucks, whatever the fuck. The link is down below in the description box below this video. And Streamlabs, Twitch alerts, or you can do a super chat uh, down there as well. And uh, we will be demonetized, so this won't make any ad revenue, but it's okay. <laughs> what else we got? Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. I That's love it. toes. Look at this stuff. Oh, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. I That's love toes. If I was to become a wrestler, my finishing move would be me pile driving my throbbing cock in and out of Debar and those retard flaps of hers. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. I My finishing move would be giving Romero his fucking deafness back. That's a my finishing move. My finishing <laughs> move would be fucking cutting Romero's ears off and then mailing them to him. Fucking via fucking U.S. post office. I love toes. Thank you for the three dollars, man. What's up? And uh, yeah, if you know, <laughs> <laughs> that would be officially split up in Drade and Angel Garza. So we're being told by PW Insider that that tag team is officially no more. And that comes after the announcement of Raw's awful, awful viewership this week. Oh my God! Oh uh, yeah, so one point six million. So they what was that the third, yep. fourth lowest, third or fourth of all time? Yeah, this is just it was uh, one point six eight six. So last week was one point six six seven. So it's it's you know not horrible, but yikes! Yeah, last week was or last excuse me, last week was one point eight two. Week before was one point six six seven. So oops. Yeah, they just keep going back down and. The third hour saw 1.5 million viewers stay into the end of the show. Jesus. <laughs> I mean, that just show that show is just so so bad, man. It's just so horrible. Like, I that, mean, that it on. is. They they are trying to explain the origins and and reasoning behind Retribution's members being in the group, and they're not doing a terrible job. But it sucks that they have to rely on Mustafa Ali to do it on Twitter. Right. Hopefully, you know, they they give more to this group as time goes on and really you know, allow them to expand as characters. I, I can, it, it, the, the little bit of story that they explained on Twitter, which we'll go into more for, I don't know where tomorrow, you know, it, it, I think it's worth everybody talking about, but it, it's something. So, I mean, they, they really could turn it into something if they keep, you know, nurturing this and, and breed it into something bigger, but WWE rushes everything so fast that I, I doubt that'll happen. Yeah. I, I, I think, uh, 
I don't. I, he, he, this is one of those things where like they could just switch course at any time at this point. I feel like, especially they did after, by adding Mustafa Ali. So well, yeah, and but I mean, because that wasn't the original plan. Even again, I feel like even again, cause especially with ratings. You know, if they see the rate like next week, if the ratings are dead next week, what are they going to do then? You know, who knows what and, the hell they'll do then? Yeah, and one of the highest numbers was Mustafa Ali's reveal. I had read, but. I, I hope that he isn't looked at as the reason, you know, because as you know, ratings usually come from the week before. So the week before was so bad that this show was down more. Now, if this show had a, a big surprise, people might talk about, oh, we got to see what Ali does in Retribution. So they might tune into Raw next week. So hopefully WWE execs don't look at it as, oh, this was a bad week because of everything this week. I want to see Ali finally get some of a chance, you know, somewhat of a chance. Imagine when, um, or when, or if the uh, <laughs> the um, the WWE ever gets down to like one point four, one point three. If AEW can get up to nine hundred K, like average, and they start creeping up into nine hundred K, and Raw starts dropping to one point five and one point four, and just keeps getting closer and closer, they're coming. Kind of crazy far out at all. Yeah, it's coming, man. It's weird. It's very, 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 very close. Unbelievable. Man, I'll tell you what. It doesn't help when they're talking about having three Hell in a Cell matches this year as well. Talk about, you know, we're going to see Randy Orton and Drew. We're going to see Roman Reigns and Jey Uso. And then rumor has it that we will end up getting Bailey versus Sasha Banks. At So, yeah, because they're going to. So all three matches yeah. will take place in the Hell in a Cell. So wait, they're it's bad average, enough when wait. you have two Hell in a Cell matches because you have to, you know, upstage the one previously are you, and do things. You know, are you saying they're three, advertising this? They're advertising it now. Uh, the two are advertised, and the third is rumored right now. It oh, looks okay. like the third is going to be Bailey yeah. and Banks. Of course, yeah. So like they're gonna like they're gonna bust on Friday, and I don't mean like that. I might bust. <laughs> they're gonna bust on Friday, and then they're gonna and they're gonna have to wrestle again, and then it's gonna go to the Sunday, and so they are gonna wrestle in Hell in a Cell, but they're also gonna wrestle on Friday night. For like three, yep. probably three seconds or something like that. So that's gonna yeah, go be to quick and unbelievable. That'll leave a DQ of some sorts, or Bailey will bring in a chair, and then she'll say, "Well, I want to face you. You already put my life through hell. Mm -hmm. No DQ, no nothing. Hell in a cell, and it'll be Sasha's third hell in a cell." So Sasha Banks, and you know what? They were hell. All her other ones. Like Sasha Banks has not had. Oh no! Wait a minute. Bad. That's right. Yeah. You know what? Her her and Charlotte <laughs> was horrible. First Washington gets rid of the American Indian. Now they bench their black quarterback in favor of a white man. When are people going to realize what's really going on? <laughs> uh, they bench their black quarterback in favor of a white man. That's funny. What's up, Gook the Humpster Broski? Thank you, man. We're going to switch over to debate mode in a minute now. Um, but real quick, final thoughts, anything else we missed uh, wrestling-wise? And, oh, you're right. We didn't. I didn't finish it off. You were right. Uh, Sasha and Becky was really good, actually. It was really good, right? Wasn't that a really good yeah, match? I didn't think it was great, but it had some good moments, like the part where she, you know, I, I the standout was when she propped her up in the corner to sit on the chair and drop kicked her, which ended up hurting Sasha, but still a cool spot that stands out. They, they had a pretty good match, though. I thought they did have a really pretty good match in that Hell in a Cell. And then Charlotte and Sasha was bad. So That first one, women's, was not good. You were there for that. so Yeah, and that's why I gave it more credit, because it was fun to be there, and they, you know, Sasha, they came right out next to us and everything, and they, you know, it was fun to see her, and she acknowledged stuff. I don't know. Anyway, whatever. But bottom line is tonight, AEW, I guess I'm going to go with a 6.5 out of 10, which I think is what you already said you gave it. I'm going to give it a 5.5. So Okay. I'm giving it a, I'm giving it a high score because the opening match was good. The the dog collar match was great. And one one other thing was pretty good. And I don't think it, I didn't find anything else to be enjoyable besides those two matches. Yeah. The dog collar. Maybe I'll lower my opening. And see the dog I didn't care for the ending, so that kind of took away from me personally. So, I mean, 5.5 seems fair when you have two segments worthwhile. We got about 35 minutes of really good stuff. And then, no, we got about 45 minutes of really good stuff um, without commercials, you know, 45 minutes. And um, uh, the rest the, was the, really bad. 
the dog collar match was two minutes thirty two seconds, and the opening match was eight forty six. Jeez. So you got about thirty minutes, unless you want to count entrances. What else we got? Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's want it. some bubbly? Look at this stuff. Oh, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's Mike Pence beat that Negro twat in that debate. Oh. Hashtag Trump 2020. Hashtag Harris Hasekok. Oh my God, dude! What the fuck? God damn it! That's you ridiculous fucked. piece of shit. That is fucked up. I love toes. What the fuck, bro? Jesus, that is not a good. That's not a good thing to say. Even if, even <laughs> if she, even if he did beat her, that's fu- <laughs> that's fucked up. Oh, Devious Dave Rose wants me to read more wrestling news. Oh, all right. So, did you know that Ronda Rousey's contract is up this April? Jesus. I keep forgetting that it's this soon already. But yeah, it makes sense because she was there for WrestleMania 35. I just heard she's coming back. 34. I yeah, we, was... we keep hearing that she's, you know, been working with Roddy Piper's daughter, Teal, there. She was supposed to be training with her. We didn't know if it was just, is is it, you know, actually like ring rust that she's trying to work off, or uh-huh. is she just having fun with Teal? You never know. <laughs> but uh, it, I was I was hoping that the comeback was true, because I really enjoyed her in WWE. She added something to the women's division, surely, so. And I had to rush it down my throat. <laughs> ah, Drew. Oh. A lot of small ones. All right. Come on. Come on. Um, all right. Let's go. To, we're going to go to the debate mode, everybody. If you want to hang around, feel free to hang around. If you don't want to hang around for the pol- pol- political debate talk, we are going to be ending the stream here on Joe Cronin Show and going exclusively over to my other channel on Corrupted Nation. Now, we're going to stay live, though, for a few more minutes to give people the chance to switch over and understand what's going on. So if you want to hear that, uh, come on over there, man. I, I have only seen half of the debate, and I really, I think we might even watch some of it, you know, because I want to hear some things that I didn't hear. So, um, you know, hopefully we can we can do that. You said that she just seemed aligned. He just seemed robotic. I mean, I haven't seen any of it yet, so I'm really well, curious to hear some see, of your thoughts what, what, early what, what, what on. What was hilarious is at the beginning, um, at the beginning, she was pretty good at the beginning, and he was dancing around some things. He wouldn't answer the questions. He was just like filibustering about American people or something. And she was being ridiculous too, but she was at least conveying something. And then, you know, you know, when you hit a tennis ball back and forth with somebody, you know, you hit the ball, the other person hits it back. She hit it. And then he just kind of like grabbed it and was like, yo, I'm going to put, put this in my pocket and walk around for a minute. Like, what are you doing? So like, which was smart in a way because the questions were kind of like, like they were hard. They were questions that were gonna, it were gonna be hard to answer, to be honest. And so in the first ten minutes, I tweeted Kamala's winning, and then all these Republican psychos were like, "You're a piece of shit, you <laughs> idiot." And it's like, dude. And people t- right now are still tweeting me like, "You fucking, you're delusional." Yeah, dude. I said th- it was the first ten minutes of the debate, retard. Okay. Because yeah, you can't because well, then you can't make a oh, comment though. You know, a little bit of the then she started. That's how snowflake both sides are. Fuck both sides. I hate both parties. You're you're all pussy bags. The only thing being rushed down someone's throat was bullfrog's semen down his. Oh, oh, wait till stop. <laughs> Lol. Oh. By the way, shout out to the chat. A lot of small ones. Yeah, a lot of small ones in the chat. No, I, I love toes. Thank you, man. Thank you to the racist. I love. I mean, I love toes. Thank you. I love toes. Um, and she, he's banned for life. So he, you don't have to worry about him coming on the show again or telling people he's coming somewhere. He's not coming anywhere. He's done. The guy's just, I'm just not going to have him on, uh, banned off monetize this officially. And I'm just at this point, he's, he's done. Obviously when you make threats on people and he's taken down nine of the community's, uh, Twitter accounts, I've had several people hit me up that they're really angry because he actually took out their Twitter accounts, which is like, wow. Okay. So like that's, that's, that's happening. That's a thing. Um, all right, we are. Uh, are you sticking around, Jake, for a few minutes? Or yeah, stick around for a few minutes. And All right, it'll be fun to hear. My way out of here. By the way, we're going to unleash the um, the Discord for everybody. So hopefully, you guys jump on Discord with us and come hang out if you want to say something about the debate. Pence versus Kamala, much more boring than Trump. Not quite as animated and fun. No doubt about it. Um, but we're going to have Devious Dave Rose is going to be coming on. So where's all you liberals? Where are you liberals at to fight with Devious Dave Rose? 
because you know he's going to be bringing the hardcore dick sucking Trump sucking. So you need we need a we need a liberal here who will suck Kamala Harris's camel lips. Okay, so let's 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 go here, man. I wish I I wish I saw the debate because I mm. we need be inclined to. Argue. I'm usually more on the liberal side of things, you know, not full, but yeah, I usually find myself more aligned with their viewpoint. So. Devious Wish Dave Rose is like going to be with Dave. Dave is going to be slurping on Trump's banana cock. All right, so I'm looking for somebody else who wants to fight with Dave about Kamala Harris, her camel toe versus Mike Pence's little banana prick. All right, little banana prick versus uh, versus the lips. Let's bring it on, baby. Let's see what happens. Uh, we got Devious Dave Rose here. Dave, how are you tonight, sir? Not too bad. Um, enjoyed the debate tonight. It was uh, much more uh, reserved as uh, compared to the last it one. It was a real yeah. debate like we expected, right? Like it was more of a real debate. Yeah, it was Yeah, it was a debate. It wasn't a, what we had the other day, which I still can't really classify. I would classify. Sometimes a debate is like, it's sort of like these two trying to get one over on each other, both playing politics. Like, and it's almost like a, it's an art in a way, you know, a debate is an art. Um, but what we saw last time was, I don't know, man. It's almost like, you know, when, when, if someone said, all right, you're an artist, you're an artist, draw me your best tree. And each artist is going to interpret it different and draw something. But, you know, at the end, they come up with a tree. Trump goes, looks at the fucking paint can and just dumps it on the fucking thing and goes there. Makes you laugh, right? Like that. That's a fucking tree. That looks no. like a bunch of shit, Donald. I don't know. Um, but no, I'm just fucking around. I'm kidding. Relax, Dave. It's a horrible analogy. Um, it is a horrible analogy. I wish you'd use a better one. Can't take no. a joke. Well, no, it's not a joke. Oh, I, I, that's really a bad joke. no. It's a bad. Maybe the it's, asterisk. It's not a bad. It's a bad one. What else? He's we right. Got? He's not. Oh, kidding. a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's Want it. some bubbly? Look at this stuff. Oh, oh, <laughs> a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. <laughs> yes, this debate wasn't as entertaining, but I feel like we got more answers here. Pence is a great figure and has a good mindset overall. Kamala, on the other hand, is a woman, and since she is a woman, she shouldn't be in power. Sorry, but women are useless. That is a fucking horrible wow. thing to say. I don't agree with That's that, but... Quite the statement, I love toes. I mean, uh, that is... I can't really endorse that. I think that's I hilarious, my though. conservative views, but I can't really... <laughs> that, is a, that is a pretty funny uh, donation, though. <laughs> I wish Leah was here to hear that, so she could lose her fucking womanhood. But, Regardless um, of Kamala being a woman, she still shouldn't be in power. Well, she blew somebody in California, so I saw a clip of her snapping it and saying, "I'm speaking, I'm speaking." Like that's one of the top retweeted things at this point because that's probably the only bit of drama, right? <laughs> Is that it? That, that yeah, and it happened yeah. several times. She had this this sassy type Demeanor. attitude, yeah, like the whole you know ghetto uh, rat, you know, like. Her head like shifting on, you know, how they do it, you know, how it just moves around, <laughs> fucking sucking her lips and fucking just shaking her head like, Dave, no, Dave, no. what do you mean? What do you mean how they do it? What exactly? <laughs> rats do it. Whoever, you know, like if you ever. This lady doesn't even know. Crashing. This lady doesn't know who the fuck Tupac is. She's not a ghetto rat. She doesn't know what Tupac, who Tupac is, that he's dead, and when he existed, and when he was prominent. How can okay, you perhaps, call her? What do you mean they? The right term. Do you mean black people, you... Dave? You racist yeah. no, black she's people? Indian. She's Indian. Well, half Indian. She's Indian. Okay, Elizabeth Warren isn't Indian, but she is Indian. No, she's not real Indian. Well, I mean, like, you know what? That's what I keep hearing Indian. is, oh, oh, you know, I keep saying this. I say this all the time. Oh, you know, black people, this, that. I'm like, dude, we had a black president for eight years. And then a black guy says to me, he wasn't really black. Well, when the fuck are we really, when is, who's really black then? What the fuck are we talking about, Dave? By the way, it's a rant. Morgan Freeman. This Morgan is a, Freeman is black. But this is a, <laughs> I'm serious, man. When, when Obama ran, all these people said, yay, first black president. I did too. I was like, oh, we got the first black president. But then I heard people on the got? right and the oh, left say he's not black. A little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's Want it. bubbly? Look at this stuff. Oh, who the oh, fuck is who a little the bit fuck of the bubbly? Black? That's it. <laughs> all women are good for is sucking and fucking. 
My man OJ proved that. Good going, Simpson. I killed that bitch. You ever kill a white bitch with a knife and get away with it? I did. Uh, Fuck you. Turn it, turn it down with that anti-woman rhetoric there. <laughs> I mean, I love what about toes. What's up with this uh, pink eye thing going on? Everyone's saying hashtag yeah, pink I, eye tense is trending, and they think that's the – because it is often a symptom of COVID people are talking about. So they he's going to get pink COVID eye. Now. He's going to get well, pink eye. I was looking at that very strongly, and I couldn't um, – normally when you do have pink eye, and I had it as a kid – um, obviously that one eye is much more, it's watering a lot more. You're blinking a lot more in that eye than the other eyes. And I was just, just observing him for a lot of it because mm. like, it was just really weird that one eye, that left eye just really caught me off guard. It looked very different compared to his other one. Yeah. Cause the coronavirus can cause conjunctivitis. It says here, but I mean, I had, but, uh, I had pink eye twice and it, it sucked. <laughs> like it I've had fun. it many times before. It's awful. Maybe his um, cornea is is somewhat, you know, deformed or larger. That's a possibility because you didn't see the whites of the eye, you know, closer to the, um, I guess, to the back of his head that you could to see on on his right eye. So that's why you know that was that anomaly. There was something there, but we couldn't figure out what it was. Joe, I sent you that photo in the uh, Facebook. Um, which chat, one? Which, which shows his eye. Okay, so yeah. Maybe you want to show that. It's and then it's obviously the eye. fly that landed on shit, yes, everyone that, says. <laughs> that, I mean, that was really, really weird. Right? The fly. When have you ever seen a fly stay still that long? And yes, that's another it's thing. It's a drone. Though. It's a drone, Dave. I'm telling you, it's well, a drone. I mean, that's <laughs> the thing, though. You know what's funny? You know what's funny is they, I, the technology has actually existed for quite some time where you, you can, like, strap down a little fucking fly with, like, this little motor, and, like, you can control it. The CIA has been doing it for years and shit. Yeah, so, yeah. But the thing is, though, that's a great thing is it's, like, you'd think that fly fly would have moved i mean like what the fuck does this guy comb his hair with like shit and that's why the fucking fly was just <laughs> obsessed with staying at that one spot because it, like you don't normally see a fly fucking just you know not be erratic do you, you know? remember when it happened to hillary uh, that's all i could think of and it happened to obama too it went right onto his yeah. lip why are these always i mean this tells you uh that I, well, actually, they're doesn't reptilians. it? They're reptilians. I, it doesn't really tell you anything, actually, because I was going to say maybe it tells you who the winners are going to be, but it doesn't make sense because Obama, uh, Hillary, and and now Pence. So that I don't understand. They're, maybe they're walking corpses, guys. Everybody, yeah. yeah, maybe they're zombies and they're the reptilians, like you said. I mean, really, uh, guys, in the chat, I'm putting the link in. We are ending the stream on Joe Cronin show. Come over to Corrupted, and we're going to talk a little bit about this some more. So come over to Corrupted, everybody, right now. Corrupted nation where your non-wrestling talk goes down and we all take our dicks out. And Dave says racist things. Come on.